I think that we're all quite aware of this excess all around us, whether it's choices of things to wear in our closets, shows we could watch on Netflix, or even pasta sauce brands. Our options seem to be endless. We celebrate this keep my options open and endless lifestyle. But I want to talk about the joy of limitations. Why embracing your limitations might just be the option that you keep shopping and searching and scrolling for. So first of all, past physical options. I think we have this unrelenting expectation for ourselves and our spouses and our children. And I think it comes from this cultural slogan, exceed expectations, push your limits, level up. It's just normal language to us. And it's not all bad. I was drinking some water off my hand. I feel it. It was drinking water. But. When you can be anything and have anything, all the choices at your fingertips, it's just really easy to lose sight of your most important choice and to feel contented as you live with them. I know that's something I struggle with. Psychologists call this decision fatigue. It's the idea that the more choices we have to make, the more the quality of our decisions deteriorates. And I would add to that, the more unsatisfied we are with the simple joys of our ordinary day-to-day -day life. The reality is that we can only do so much. And if we don't make that choice, life, time will decide it for you. And this is important to me because I think it's so tightly tied to the myth that we can have it all. It's sold to us in advertising, businesses and Instagram bios proudly boast up to 10 values without a hint of irony. And we even expect teenagers now to have dozens of extracurriculars, semi-professional sports they can play, mission trips they've been on, perfect grades, vibrant social life to put on their college application by age 18. No one wants to acknowledge that we're only human, that we only have so much energy. And we never really talk about what the good life actually looks like to us. I think this is at the core of the beautiful human condition and it's seen even with the first humans, Adam and Eve. The garden isn't good enough, you could have more. Step outside of the limitations of your time, your schedule, your emotional maturity. At the end of this video, I'm going to share with you the specific limitations that our culture says I shouldn't enjoy but that I actually do. But before I get to that, I want to talk to you about why our limitations are good news. There is a freedom that comes from accepting your limitations and a simplification of your life around what really matters to you. Kelly Capick is a theologian and author of one of my favorite books titled You're Only Human, and he makes the bold statement that our limitations are good news. He even goes so far as to call them a great blessing. Our limitations are what keep us connected and grounded to these real rich good parts of life. having one option forever as a spouse. Marriage is the single most important thing that I would say God has used for my self-growth. Get 
to be on there. These eyes never open until I saw you. The next is having kids. Less time to do whatever I want, less money to do whatever I want, more responsibility and less quote unquote free time made it so evident to me what was actually important to me in my life and what was the work that I wanted to do that really mattered to me. There are little things too, like having one car and being debt free and not having a TV, dumbing down my smartphone, taking the internet off of it and all the superfluous apps. Hash rounds, 25 pounds. Here are some ways to embrace limits in your life. Number one, decluttering. Limiting the physical stuff and choices in your drawers, your rooms, and closet. Number two, having a bedtime that you've pre-decided. Setting that limit for yourself and then flexing that discipline muscle, getting into bed and prioritizing your rest. This artichoke, which is ready today. Having work hours if you work from home. Dumbing down your smartphone, maybe unplugging the internet, deleting social media from your phone. I think this practice discipline of stopping, of saying no, of practicing contentment, it flies in the face of our culture. But let me tell you, even if you start with decluttering, you'll see that it feels so human and real and authentic. What we're saying no to by saying yes to everything is being bored, long walks outside, time to journal about what your essentials are, conversations with ordinary people, something sweet your kid's doing, a hilarious facial expression from your spouse, just being present to this human experience. I think less is more, but I'd love to hear from you what the good life is to you. I love you guys. Thank you for being here. Take care.